And we've got a doozy of one for you today. It's a movie episode. Joining us, of course, is the great Brian Quimby. We're back again. And fellas, I got to say, uh, doing this episode about the Daily Wire movie Lady Ballers was my idea. And it's one that I pretty much instantly regretted because within <laughs> 30 seconds of watching this movie, I realized that I was in for something. It was going to be a real slog to get through. I mean, this movie, I, when I started, I was like, look, it's a comedy. It'll be a tight 90. Get in, get out. I can watch it in like 20 minute uh, chunks as I do chores around the house. Nope. This movie was pretty much two hours long. That was what hit me. <laughs> Yeah, this movie this movie is like I don't know people who have played the game control out there. This was like an object of power from that game. <laughs> this movie is like this movie is like a quantum object. Like it somehow like it, it somehow became longer the more I watched it. Like the time the counter increased the further it went. I felt like I was watching it for nine hours. I kept trying to do things like watch combat footage or play ready or not <laughs> to like clear my mind but it, it just kept fucking going this way I, I very early in the movie i was trying to think of like the secondhand embarrassment i was getting and i realized it reminded me of something from my own life when i was six and I would like basically like I would write down my ideas for like, you know, a movie. And it was just like a pastiche of things I'd seen from like an Adam Sandler movie and then three Disney movies. So it, it, I would like hand a sheet of paper to my mom that was like, it's a coach acting stupid. And then like a dog eats a cake and then <laughs> scores a touchdown. <laughs> and that's, like, but that's like how they made this. It's just a it's just a, 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 a horrible combination of like literally that things they saw in an Adam Sandler movie than like yeah. things they saw in like uh, like a, a college humor sketch. There's a lot. Felix. There's a lot. There's a lot of like um, a man with mahogany books like yeah. that. that day <laughs> yeah. Like, no, Felix, you're exactly right that uh, Jeremy Boring and company, who is the writer director and star of this movie and it was like a good indication of where it was going that in the credits it's like a film by jeremy boring a boring picture a production of boring films because it really like it front loaded the experience but you're right like what they were trying to go for was that like 90s era of like snl comedies like you know dirty work or billy madison or or you know like early 2000s like anchorman judd apatow like they're trying to go for that broad silly kind of dirty uh, 90s comedy but here's the thing even with a staunchly right-wing point of view the soy has become so hegemonic in our culture <laughs> that, yeah. like, like even like every like have you did you notice that every quote-unquote joke in this movie had nothing to do with the character situation or like advancement of the plot it was just an ironic aside basically essentially made to the audience where jeremy boring goes that was weird wasn't it a guy, a girl with a dick. Now I've heard everything. Like, yeah, it was it was so unbelievably soy. This movie, it's eighty five percent too political. Like they were really trying to make <laughs> like sorority boys or whatever that movie was. But they just every joke is just like, can you believe this is what the left thinks? And it's like, oh, like yeah, they're, they're, that's I how mean, they fucked it up. Like I think we were we were discussing before we got on mic. Like, what what is the worst movie we've ever done for this show in the series of like right wingers trying to make movies? And I don't think it. I don't. I don't think this one tops uh, the the range fifteen movie. The one rare movie episode I actually wasn't part, uh, involved in. But I will say that this is far and away the least funny movie we've ever had to do yeah. like for a movie that's trying to be a comedy, a raucous, you know, satirical work of comedy. I have never seen anything less funny than this movie. And it wasn't even like kind of like cringe humor where you're like, oh, God, it like hurts you to like, which is in itself kind of funny. This was just like anti-comedy on a level that negates the very existence of laughter. Yeah. The worst part of it was that you could always see the form of the thing they were going for, which was, you know, like a, a thing that you've seen 15 years ago. Like, in fact, there were several touches in this movie that suggest Jeremy Boring was like a failed, like, shoegaze director at one point. <laughs> he was. Yeah. He was. Yeah. 
Yeah, like, he was he was like a guy who tried to get in on like the indie sleaze movement and like didn't it just never happened for him. And like, look, it didn't happen for me either. I didn't have sex <laughs> in 2009 either. But like, you don't see me making this. I mean, oh, the, Felix, the thing, and, and, the and, thing, and, the thing at the end where Matt Wa- Matt Walsh is like another oh my uh, God. Uh, uh, another thing I've done is Matt Walsh and Candace Owens is like you didn't do anything, and he goes <laughs> complete rip off of the <laughs> which is literally a meme from like 2015 of like my, my work is done here. You didn't do anything, which is based off a Simpsons joke from fucking 15 years before that <laughs> it's so, 1991 it's like, yeah, it's i didn't know that he was the ceo of the daily wire i thought he was just like a guy that i thought like a lot of the people in this movie it, it's like when you go to the uh comic book movies when you go see like a marvel movie and you're there with a bunch of marvel fans and you're just a person that's like i'm just you know trying to fill my head for two hours <laughs> And like some guy comes on screen and people start clapping and cheering and you don't know who that guy is because you don't read the comics that I felt that way through this whole movie. Only the comics was the Daily (laughs) Wire universe. (laughs) Wait, yeah. Wait, unfortunately, Brian, I do know the contributors to the Daily Wire (laughs) as 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 well as I know, you know, the uncanny, astonishing and incredible X-Men and their various lineups (laughs) so that when. When when Andy and when Andrew Claven gets a one sentence cameo to go, I've never seen a woman with a dick that big. I was like, yes, that's the Easter egg for all the Andy Claven <laughs> fans out there. And I just want to say that, like, while this has the veneer of a 90s Adam Sandler comedy, but with incredibly soy writing, imagine like a 90s SNL comedy where virtually every joke is infused with the threat of being forcibly sodomized. And like, that is the people who created this movie. And and here's, here's the thing. Like, here's the main thing. My main takeaway from this movie is that going into it, I expected a hateful piece of shit that just like was a carnival of uh, denigration of gay and trans people. And this movie was certainly that, I mean, I don't want to undersell that part of this movie, but I was astonished that the actual real target of the most hateful quote unquote comedy in this movie or like the, the, the butt of virtually every joke that's mean in this movie is not gay or trans people. It is cisgendered heterosexual women. Yeah. This is not a movie that is a, 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 a outrageous critique of the idea that trans athletes should be allowed to compete in the, uh, in, 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 in competition that aligns with their gender identity. The movie certainly is that, but what this movie actually is, is not a critique, but an argument against the concept of women's sports writ large. This Poor movie jobs. is an attack on the idea that women are in any way equal to men across the board, leaving basketball aside. A couple of things like the, the, he does say, like, you know, women are good at other things like loving their children and just yep. stuff that like, oh, my God. Does. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. That, so that, that, that they have that late in the movie. Which is, I, that's my least favorite thing is when these guys have to do like a big speech about like how much they love women. And it's always so, it, like, it's so, it, there's literally a Demonious X video called What is a Friend that it sounds exactly <laughs> like. <laughs> and he's, you know, if I can recall this video from many years ago, he's he, he says, a woman is a friend who could, do some cool shit like a guy can and maybe suck your sausage. But she can't she can't fuck around like you can with the boys. But she can be good at other things like emotions and shit. And that, that's it. Basically it was Jeremy Boring's entire speech. It was so, it was like a guy who like experiences no sexual attraction making the case for women. Yeah. <laughs> well, yes. Okay, well, here, here's the other thing about Jeremy Boring. If I knew nothing about this movie going into it and just watched the first five to ten minutes, I would have assumed that this was a comedy about a gay basketball coach and his all-white <laughs> oh basketball God, team. I, yeah, I wanted to say the same thing. First of all, I, I at first was like, nobody in this movie looks like they should be in this movie for some reason. Like, I had this <laughs> yeah. weird feeling where, like, at the beginning, I was like, this guy... 
I cut. I had the same exact reaction that you did. I will it's say a this: gay, it's a gay basketball coach <laughs> coaching an all-white high school basketball team to the yeah. state championship of Tennessee in 2008. Is how this movie begins, and I, I should mention that, like, uh, in some of the promo, some of the press for this movie. The Daily Wire released a clip of Ben Shapiro talking to Jeremy Boring about this movie. And in it, he uh, he reveals that originally they wanted to do this movie about a team of men's basketball, like a former high school men's basketball players who put on wigs to compete against women because sports are woke now. Ben Shapiro said they originally wanted to do this concept as a documentary but dropped it when they realized that the thing they portray in this movie simply doesn't happen nor would be allowed to happen anywhere in the United <laughs> States. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, like, I mean, like, that's what I'm saying. It's a hard to say this movie is hateful to trans people because this movie does not even understand trans people nor feature a single trans person in it. This is like, they have a fundamental disconnect between, like, the, the sequence in the movie where he gets a job at a restaurant in Nashville that just features oh. men dressed as women. Like, I don't think the movie under, like, they seem to confuse transvestitism with transgenderism. And like, uh, but like here's, here's the thing. Despite the fact that like the essential comedic plot of this movie, the thing it is satirizing does not exist. So therefore, like, it, there's nothing to satirize. The scenario that this movie mines comic material from is, doesn't exist. They, like, there's nothing to mine there. But here's another, like, the broader part about the broader misogyny of this movie, not just, like, its hatred of gay and trans people, which I said are, like, a complete afterthought in the plot of this movie. They essentially don't exist at all in the universe of this movie. But, like, aside from the ludicrous idea that, like, the plot of this movie could be allowed to happen because of wokeness in sports, there's another huge, huge glaring, like, and deeply misogynistic belief that this movie expects you, the audience, to fucking go along with wholeheartedly. And that is the idea that a team of former high school athletes who have not trained or played the sport in over a decade could easily wash off the court a professional women's basketball team. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, like I, I, no, yeah. no. I'm sorry. It's because they like. I know. I know. I know. They can't dunk, but the New York Liberty would fucking still smoke uh, that men's team by sixty points. Yeah, yeah. Like even with like a more like I, I, I don't know a, a less abstract sport, a less abstract form of competition. There are countless videos of like women's MMA fighters that regularly fight in, in the 115 and like 135 pound divisions, like beating the shit out of men and like men who have trained men who are considerably larger than them. Obviously that doesn't mean that like a 135 pound woman could like beat John Jones, but like professional athlete does like mean something. Yeah. And like th this movie is so clearly done like Jeremy Boring and Ben Shapiro in The Daily Wire, this movie just comports to every stereotype I had in my head about them going into this movie, is that they were all dweebs in high school who were abused by people who were good at sports and thought that that was right and proper. And then their adult life have, have, have sort of appropriated the, uh, the, I don't know, the title of winner or jock uh, from it because they continue to be mean to those weaker than them. And, and the thing is, like, the, the sexism of this movie and its hatred towards all women's sports stems from the fact that a guy like Ben Shapiro, who has been basically uh, slighted by his male peers his entire life, has been sh shorter, smaller, and weaker than every man around him, and certainly less gifted at athletic, athletic competition, has to rely so heavily on the idea that he's still better than any woman on the planet, <laughs> if any, physical con if any physical act. And it's just like, that is plainly untrue. Plainly. Yeah. All right, so can we talk about like the the shittiness of how this was made? Because like, okay, they do this like very like brain damage college humor thing of like when the let's say flamboyant straight coach uh, <laughs> is winning, they they show that and they like he's they win the championships, they're on top of the world, and then they just cut to like it's. 10 years later and his life is shit. There isn't like a smash cut. There isn't like a fade. There isn't any type of like funny transition that like any competent director would use to suggest like the passage of time and like the collapse of this guy's life. It's just, he's a very long scene of him 
now in a high school and he unfortunately has, let's just say, a lot of hip hop style students. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. like he's he's it's, it's it's like you see him, his hair is gray now, and he's like doing the same shit he was doing in the start of the movie, where he's like, he's like places wait, everybody. Wait. Remember to use the bounce path every once in a while. <laughs> yeah, he's like winning is the most important thing, and all his students are like, "Yo, dog, can we finish this up? I got a rape later." <laughs> <laughs> Be like, yo, 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 I, I, you're boring as hell. I'm finna <laughs> vote for a progressive prosecutor so I can get back on the streets in six months. I mean, it, it yo, sounds... Yo, yo I, I got gang practice later. <laughs> it does sound like Felix is... Like you, it's all, almost not like an a exaggeration. They just are like... he. It, this guy goes, don't steal my catalytic converter. Then they steal his catalytic converter and he gets fired for saying, don't steal my catalytic converter because it's racist. And it's like, that is as racist of a joke as you can possibly open the movie. <laughs> uh, you, you know, it's also, uh, you know, it's also pretty racist in this movie. The idea that his success as a coach of high school basketball decreased dramatically after any black students were allowed into the school district. He was a coach of. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> I, it's it's just like also okay. I was following the catalytic converter story. The guy stealing the catalytic converter. Um, look, they all had the Edgar haircut. I don't think it says anything about the Latino Latinx people, but they all none of those guys were black guys. I'm sorry, they were <laughs> all like like Latino guys, like Mexican guys in Texas. Because they all had the Edgar. Like, I, I was obsessed with that story for the longest time. That was not, like, a thing that, like, tons of black guys were doing. But, oh, I forgot. In the first ten minutes of the movie, I think that they have issued, like, a direct challenge, like, to me. Because they, there's a character in the movie, like, who's on their team, who's, like, implied to be... He he's like a semi-gay obsessive who loves the team and they hate him and they named him Felix and it's like <laughs> yep. <laughs> I'm the only guy like named that <laughs> it, it's like, like, like it's not 1965 anymore there aren't tons of guys with that name just you and, and I the feel like they're at this point he, they're issuing like a direct shot across the bow at me and they're challenging me to, I don't know, a contest where we both get raped by the how much guy from the movie. You got to <laughs> they want you to make your own fucking movie that's woke instead of uh, the I, I do want to say also just real. It is so great that the hero of this movie is an extremely divorced guy. Yep. Like that. Yeah. Is yeah. Such yep. A, yep. They, <laughs> Yeah, they like, can't I, help I, I, it. They can't help it. Like, I, oh god, he's the most divorced guy in the world, and his <laughs> wife is currently shacked up with a character played by Matt Walsh, who we find out this is mind-boggling to me. Matt Walsh, like, it's like okay, his character is your ex-wife's current boyfriend, and like he's got a ridiculous wig, and he's doing like meditation and being like always wants to hug, and is like. It's the same joke every time he's on screen. It's just like he's a guy who wants to hug you and be touchy feely and like a, you know, sort of like Eastern spirituality liberal or whatever. We then find out at the end of the movie that the wife's boyfriend character was just Matt Walsh in a wig who says, <laughs> my work here is done, which means his work is insinuating himself into the lives and families of losers, having <laughs> sex with their wives to inspire them to be winners. I yeah. <laughs> I do yeah. want to say also when he picks his daughter up from school and he pulls up and the teacher has four masks on with different like languages on them and, or with <laughs> oh different like, God. you know, trans. It was so like, oh, my God, they're just going to because what happens after that is they go to his ex-wife's house and in her yard, she has a sign that says, in this house, we believe crickets are delicious. Silence is violence. Speech is also violence. No one is <laughs> illegal, but Europeans coming to America was bad. Guns don't kill people. White people kill people. Also, guns kill people. Trans rights are human rights. 
Feelings don't care about your facts. Oh, of Pride Month is every month. Social credit scores matter in exclusive <laughs> in inclusion. And finally, the earth is literally going to burst into flame one day. <laughs> and I was like, that's not a joke. That is like, that's what they think the left believes. That's like exactly the words that they would use to describe kind of the crickets thing is the one that yeah. was really a giveaway. <laughs> That drove me insane how every fucking scene they had to touch on like 15 things that they're <laughs> mad about all the time. And, and like they, they can't just focus on like like a one or two like shitty systems of jokes at all times. They're like they're like on, on like a verbal twister mat of like, OK, we have to take on the trans thing. Then, like, the Hunter Biden laptop for some reason. Then uh, Impossible Burgers. <laughs> you got to remember also the line when his daughter's telling him what she did at school that day. And she said, we learned about the Cold War. We had a moment of silence for the workers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. That, yeah, so that's how the entire movie basically <laughs> kicks into motion is that he picks his daughter up from uh, school and like the mask lady, he, the mask lady is like bitching at him because he doesn't have a catalytic converter. And, and he's, he's like, late. yeah, yeah, no, I'm a constant victim of black crime, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and um, he like gets her to take her mask masks off and he's like, you're pretty. You should wear more concealer though, which brings up even more questions about his character. <laughs> But the, like the, the, then there's just like the, there's this repulsive scene where I realize the funniest thing to conservatives is like when like a little girl is like Joe Biden's a fucking a idiot, you know, like when a little girl's like epic. Yeah, like, the scene is just, like, I, hot, like I will say so libs do the same. Sorry, I say libs do the same thing, Felix. They think it's oh, yeah, epic yeah. when a kid says the mango Mussolini is a bad guy. <laughs> Yeah, I, I guess say, it, I, it's just all like losers in America. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> the common denominator among losers everywhere is needing a literal child to give voice <laughs> to the things that you're uh, not confident enough to voice yourself. But I yeah. will say this for the 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 actor who portrays Jeremy Boring's daughter in this movie is by far the best actor in this oh, entire far. movie. By far the best actor. And like what I think is so funny about like uh, using kids to give voice to epic statements that you'd be embarrassed to say. And they're like, oh, from the mouth of babes. I like that in the sort of anti-gay, anti-trans, anti-grooming movie, they cast this like, you know, uh, angelic eight year old girl to play the daughter. And then like every line that she has in this movie is talking about how a girl showed her her penis. And they're like, okay, great, great job. Can we just do another take? Let's take it from you saying penis one more time. <laughs> yeah, it's it's the same thing they do where they're, they're, for some reason, constantly bringing up hypotheticals where, like, a 12-year-old gets raped and has to give birth. And they're like, well, now she's a mother and she's happy now. And it's like, wait, what, like, why are you bringing this up? <laughs> like, <why? laughs> yeah, yeah. But it's, it's like the same thing where... I have a theory. Um, there's a project that we're working on now that addresses the theory that basically the conservative media self reproduced at too rapid a rate and basically <laughs> caused them to become like the lowest form of like internet poster, which is just like a guy who posts CP on forums. <laughs> That's basically like what they are now. Like they're just broadcasting like snuff films and CP constantly, <laughs> I, either verbally. And they're like, or not. "See, look how evil this is. Look at it." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and there's a lot of that in this movie. Just like the very lurid idea of that. I just want to say that the little girl character is uh is interesting because they do try to put a lot of like, oh, she's being indoctrinated into gender at school into her mouth that's supposed to be satirical or whatever. And there's a big scene does a little a later. Good job explaining all of it. Yes, I was she's just gonna bring up. There's a little. Yeah. There's a scene later where where they have her explain how like gender works to all the dunce basketball players, and she's just very calmly lay, laying out. It's like some people have identities that are not their assigned gender at birth, and then they convert to different. And sexuality and gender are different, and sometimes you can switch between genders, and that's called gender fluidity fluidity and it's supposed to be like this aha moment of like look at the indoctrination but it really comes off of as like yes 
This is also simple. A child can easily grasp it and, <laughs> yeah, and, yeah, and yeah, have it make yeah, yeah. perfect sense. Yeah, c- compared to like, I guess, men who presented with the idea that like, hey, um, I guess like according to this universe, you have to be trans every day at this restaurant to work here. And they're like, yes, oh, yes. okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, okay, well, wait, wait, we- wait, is that what you like? It, Faced with that choice, would you do that? Like, they fundamentally don't get or don't care about, and like, they just don't understand. Like, that's what I mean. Like, I know this movie is intended to be offensive to people like me or people who don't haven't bought into the Daily Wire ethos and view of the world. But like, there were so many instances in this movie where I could tell that they were trying to be cheeky and offensive, but like, I literally didn't know what I was supposed to be offended about because their essential understanding of the world is so convoluted that like, and and just nonsensical. And the perfect example of this is the dollhouse restaurant that exists in this movie (laughs) where Jeremy Boring has lost his job as a high school basketball coach and is into, and he's a divorced loser. Everyone thinks he's a loser. So he goes into a, he goes to ask for his old job back. But that was like 20 years ago. And it's been converted into a restaurant called The Dollhouse, which just is like, I don't even know how to describe it. It's just men with beards wearing wigs and dresses waiting on your table at a restaurant. And then it's like drag. Yeah, it's a it drag like restaurant. It's yeah. a drag bar. Yeah. 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 It's a yeah. drag bar. But, but every single waiter is like a heterosexual guy who's like, can't wait to yeah. b- <laughs> knock off at five and take this wig off. But then they, the work is over and they're still dressed like women. It's so, it makes no <laughs> fucking sense. Yeah. Yeah. Like, the, basically, the plot of the movie goes into full gear basically because, uh, so his former, like, star basketball player, works at this restaurant with him where they both like i guess like according to them they are like trans women either permanently or just like during the work day um <laughs> just during the work day yeah <laughs> no, I know. And, and like yeah. like so he's he found out that like there's a local race in town where you can win five thousand dollars <laughs> yes you're really good That's a tight ass race. this is this is <laughs> I'd, I'd try to learn to run at that, that point. That is such a, that is, can I just say, that is such like a, again, like a six-year-old writing a movie. There's a race where you can win $5,000. <laughs> what but the only fuck if you are have you a talking wing. about? You fuck it, oh, fucking it's also, moron. It's also but, very important that like, it's open tryouts for something called the Global Games which is like invented for this movie. And then in the universe of the movie, for the first time ever, America has opened up tryouts to represent America in the global games to just anyone. And they were like, and then there's like these little like news, these little like Paul Verhoeven style, like, you know, like local news clips where they're like, you know, just saying that, you know, like uh, just not even making a joke, just be like, you know, for the first time ever, America will open up a uh, competition to losers and cripples and lames rather than the usual standard <laughs> of excellence that we've uh, upheld in this country for 200 years. Yeah, That's, I, that was like the biggest thing to me was like these people act like like all comedy is is too woke and too left and like uh, they the, everything they do is just political. But then these guys do this fucking movie where every line has like has is dripping with just the text of yes. what they believe. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. 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 It, it, it's so thuddingly literal. Like there, <laughs> there, there is, it, it, I, it literally reminds me of like this, like the videos that Israel makes where like Santa Claus gets a letter from like a child who's been kidnapped by Hamas. And is like, <laughs> Oh no. Like, like, it, it's, it, it, it's the same. Like, what is Santa going to do about it? Give him yeah, presents. I love that video because Santa <laughs> is like ostensibly thinking someone should do something about this. <laughs> <laughs> like, but it's the same, it's the same type of thing where it's like thuddingly literal. Like there, there just, there's no capability for abstract thought. So every character that's bad is will say things like I'm a journalist, so I'm a piece of shit. Li- yes, and, like like it's like literally that line is sprinkled throughout the movie. But it, it it's like the way they talk about these movies that are just like judged on an objective scale, like the least funny shit you've ever seen. 
I don't think that it's impossible for conservatives to be funny, but like, no, it's impossible for anyone this who is views politics in this degree where it's the same thing. They they talk about this movie the same way. They remind me of the people who like reviewed Crazy Rich Asians and were like, I cr- I could I cried in the fucking theater because I couldn't believe that there was a movie where uh, people in Singapore were rich. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the same thing where they're talking about how fucking important yeah. it is. Like Matt yeah. Walsh has this humiliating tweet where he's like, "Lady Ballers is our." is so important because it shows we can we can use their weapon mockery again no they can't no it's like <laughs> well, the, the, the fact that they have no see, capability like, it, of that it, it is true humor is a very effective weapon in political discourse i mean case in point the success of this show but the thing is like the way they they view it first and foremost as a weapon they're like how do i just pull this trigger it's like no you have to be funny first and they yeah. just don't and here's the thing as offensive as the concept of this movie is it is totally conceivable that you could that you could do a funny movie about this concept, even from a yeah. right wing perspective. And I kept waiting for like, if, like for instance, script doctor Will Medeker in here. I kept waiting for. I would really like this movie if there was like the rich kids from the, the like the, the the bougie part of town. Like they have an, they have a squad of like the rich trans kids basketball team, and they're snooty, and it's just like you know, it's like meatballs or something or police academy, <laughs> like you know. Yeah. <laughs> I also want to say that when our guy wins the race, he does get a Bud Light sponsorship. And somebody's <laughs> yeah. like, oh they'll God. give anybody one of those. Right, but okay. so the, the reason that he, okay, so that he gets to run the race as a woman because he's constantly wearing his like wig and like fake tits from work, like everywhere. <laughs> which work. is like, I, lo- I love it. Like, what the fuck? Like, I don't, it might have been explained at some point, but I really don't feel like it was. He's just constantly wearing this shit. Again, this thing that is supposed to represent, like, in general, this movie represents a very grim vision for men. Basically that, like, your wife will be stolen by, like, a gay man for some reason, (laughs) and you will be forced to be trans at your job. (laughs) And then you're gonna your the job that you're trans at. You're just going to like forget to stop being trans when you clock out. So like he goes to like sign him up for the race because like he was like, hey, you're you're still really fast, like you were in basketball, basketball and track. Those are two. <laughs> yeah, two very you know, they go they go sports. together. Yeah, they're, yeah they're... <laughs> like like that, you know. And they're often testing how fast you run a 40 uh, to be a basketball <laughs> player. Yeah. So that like he Jeremy Boring is like, listen, miss, you're going to get my my good boy in. And the the woman who's accepting signups like tases him because he's a white male. Mm-hmm. And then Alex, the guy who's wearing a wig, is like, hey, what's going on here? And the woman who tased him is like, oh, oh my God, you're a trans athlete. You're stunning and brave. I have to go eat bugs and kill my kids <laughs> with the vaccine. <laughs> and so they, they sign, sign him up in the women's race for $5,000. <laughs> I, <laughs> you know, I, I, I will say to give this money. a movie, a half ounce of credit. Boring does a pretty decent tr- pr- prat fall where he smacks his head on the table after getting tased. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and it's just like, uh, the contempt this movie has for women because like in every single sporting event that portrays these fucking middle-aged losers stepping onto a fucking track for the first time in decades, beating every one of the women competitors by like (laughs) 50 yards. Yeah. Like by, by five seconds crossing the finish line. It's just like, okay, can we talk about the two characters on the basketball team that are brothers who are conceived by separate sperm in the same uterus in the same uh, egg. I was so confused by what those guys were supposed to be. I, I guess yeah. like, I thought they were supposed to be scumbags at the beginning. They were like the and horny like, characters. This like yeah. they, they existed. Like this is the Daily Wise Wires conception. The two brother characters who again, very early in the movie, it's like oh these guys are brothers. And then, and then Jeremy Boring has some line about how, uh, what is it? Uh, your mother is not a catch. She was decidedly unfaithful to your dads. And I was like, what? 
And then later in the movie, it's revealed that they were conceived by like separate sperm in like they're 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 <laughs> twins in utero conceived by sep- two different guys' sperm. That's not how it fucking would like could that happen, is no. like a, how a fucking like Greek philosopher would explain it's how the Aristotle. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Writing the story that, that's where homunculi <laughs> comes out of your penis and then yeah, falls then into we have to stomach. kill every woman who has twins because that means she got two different sperm from different. Your guys. mom had your mom had sex when she was pregnant and it made another kid inside. <laughs> <laughs> So fucking it's so fucking stupid they love this thing of like well you know you like uh oh yeah well uh you guys are saying all this unscientific shit you sound like a peasant from the middle ages you don't know what the fuck you're talking about you're against no fault divorce and you think that twins are caused by like orgies i i do also want to say that when they do meet up with those guys Alex is with him and he's carrying a bag. And in 2020, almost 2024, they say, is that a person? He's like, no, it's a Merce. And it was oh like, my that. God, I Brian. couldn't even believe it. Oh my it. God, the, no, the, the yeah. mileage God. that man purse got. <laughs> they, they wore out the treads on that joke, trying to fucking uh, get a laugh out of that one. In 2024, practically. I just can't believe it. I, I mean, I guess these guys carry around briefcases instead or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was it. That would be like if I saw that in a movie from like 2006, I would be like, shut the fuck up. Like, who <laughs> did like, like, who no one's doing that? But it, it, it's so like, I feel like at least a quarter of this movie was written during Jeremy Boric, like his pre unwoke period <laughs> when he was trying to be like an indie sleaze director. He wants to be Noah Bombach. Yes. That's his like foundational trauma. He wants to be Noah Baumbach. And he like probably he tried to write a movie where like he's divorced, but he's like a G he's like the best politics guy. And his wife like he wrote like a racist version of marriage story, probably. Okay. <laughs> where, where his yeah. wife is like, I'm I'm dating this guy Jamarcus, who's a murderer. <laughs> <laughs> and they were like they were like they're like jeremy this is hor- horrible this is what your wife is dating a black 17 year old who's killed 20 people and is going to harvard on an affirmative action scholarship <laughs> that, doesn't, that doesn't exist and he's like good fuck you i'm all right i'm fully in on the movement now well i mean you, you bring up i mean like here i don't know if you guys noticed this but like there's a there, there are several jokes in this movie that are all at the expense of people who at one point in their life had aspirations to pursue a creative field like the film industry, either as an actor or writer or a director. And at every point, they are like brutally shut down for what a stupid decision it was and how dumb and untalented they are forever trying to be an actor or like in movies or whatever. And I just can't help but think that like this is Jeremy Boring can't help but betray himself here. I mean, you mentioned his career as an indie sleaze, you know, a mumblecore director. Uh, he originally he he founded a production company with his two his two actual Hollywood friends who are actually like successful actors and that's uh, Joel David Moore who's in the Avatar movies and Zachary Levy who's Shazam and I guess they're like Ooh. holding down the Christian contingent in Hollywood but their company went nowhere I don't think it even produced a single movie and this is Jeremy Boring's company he founded with his two successful friends take a guess what it was called Coattails Entertainment. Perfect. Perfect. Oh, oh, oh god. Okay. I mean, you- he he is the gene. He is the. I feel like he is the ideal of the joke that like somebody like you guys or me could turn right wing in order to get more money. You know what I mean? Like he is definitely. Now he comes off as like a guy who is like, well, I'm not going to be able to make real movies that play in the movie theater so i'll just do this daily wire plus gig i guess yeah it really like i begrudgingly do have sympathy for him because it's like look i wish i wish we had all made it in 2009 that was the best time ever that was the greatest time in human history but (laughs) we did we didn't you jeremy boring you presumably were like 49 then (laughs) <laughs> yeah <laughs> i was but a boy but it, you know regardless <laughs> we all carry scars from that um but like like stop fucking making movies please You're not or, or or like try to 
try to make like your version of Garden State that you undoubtedly wrote the entire script for. <laughs> <laughs> try not to put a conservative hat on a hat on a hat on a hat and every joke. And I think you might be able to figure something out. Yeah. He has the ma- he could make like a very five out of ten mumblecore movie. If you yeah. just like if you like did shock therapy every time he wants to like include a joke where a, like a, a stupid liberal woman is like, oh, I like I I um, I'm doing a fucking land acknowledgement for Christmas or something. I am reading his his Wikipedia and I find this like really interesting line here because I was very confused about it in the movie. Uh, in March, 2022, boring opened a line of subscription based shaving razors called Jeremy's razor. Yep. There's an ad for them in the, this movie. I know. I thought that was a joke on Harry's razors, but uh, I don't know. Like, is that, or, or was it just an ad? I couldn't figure. I thought it was they a joke. They tried to be cheeky about it, but they put a podcast ad in the middle of their movie. And at yeah. that point, there there's no coming back from that. That that's like you're trying to to be to make a joke of this, but you are the ones getting played. Yeah. As with everything, I, I think that like the actual more everything like this, I think the actual more interesting movie would be the meta movie about the failed Hollywood aspiration guy who has to slum it in this conservative media landscape, making this movie, probably getting an actual divorce while it's happening, texting his Hollywood big shot friend uh, Zachary Levy begging him to do a cameo in the, in this thing, knowing that he's making schlock, but it's the best option that he can. That's the mumblecore movie Jeremy Boring should make. Yeah, I, I, I think like any movie, really about like anyone who's in the conservative movement, because it is like, it is such an interesting world and it sucks that like there are so few good comedies out because it's like, it's a patently ridiculous and funny world be- just because there is so much money going around. There's so much there's there is such an unbelievable amount of money going around that like it, it, it everything else almost pales in comparison. And the result of that money is just like they literally have no idea what to do with it. And they are assigning entire b- bureaus to like the most fucked up people on Earth. And it's funny to watch that. It, it's but, like watching an adult play uh bowling with the bumpers in you know yeah 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 <laughs> yeah uh just to know yeah there there is a podcast ad halfway through this movie that's intended to be funny and meta like winking at the audience my man looking smooth man you guys weren't kidding these jeremy's razors are amazing and did you know that jeremy's now offers a razor specially designed for women and don't forget about jeremy's shampoo and conditioner they, they keep our hair silky and smooth. Couldn't we just find someone else like from the year before? But like per- portray like you know, betraying the fact that, like in the every aspect of the production of this movie, they did not intend for it to be seen by anyone who was not a Daily Wire subscriber, because this joke would make no fucking sense if you were seeing this movie in a theater and didn't know that Jeremy Boring was a shaving impresario. Uh, in, addition, <laughs> in, in, in addition to the razors that he sells, he also tried to sell a line of anti-woke chocolate bars after the... Oh, I remember that. Yeah, those. yeah, no, it says, and Marge seeking to capitalize on right-wing outrage over Hershey's chocolate, including a trans woman in their PR campaign for International Women's Day. Boring unveiled Jeremy's chocolates. The first two milk chocolate bars available were he, him, and she, her. The former made with nuts and the latter nutless. Ha <laughs> ha. The Daily Wire claimed they sold half a million bars within days of launch. Uh, the bars, for, uh, uh, the bars cost thirty dollars for a pack of four chocolate bars. So that's seven dollars <laughs> a chocolate bar. And it says here, those did, who did receive their pricey candy, the bars cost as much as seven dollars a piece before taxes and fees. Found the weight wasn't necessarily worth it. Incomplete orders, melted chocolate, and overall dissatisfaction with quality were common in customer reviews. Of course, many Daily Wire's loyal subscribers still tried to find a positive spin, and some were satisfied to make a political statement with their spending, arguing that quote taste was never the point. <laughs> oh God! But like, no, like I mean, like like that. That sums it up. It's like, okay, Hershey's used a trans woman in their ad for International Women's Day. And he got so mad about that, he just had to sell people $8 candy bars to remind them that, yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. We're, we're, the, we're the fucking, yeah, we're the, we're the hateful candy. Please eat that yeah, at $8 like, a pop. Do, do you know anyone who 
you would at least like to talk to who like knows all the ad campaigns that are going on. <laughs> like I don't know what like I don't know what the fucking Hershey is think he's talking about it. <laughs> like about, I, I'm, I'm, I I guess they did like some fucking photo shoot where they're like, here's the, the, the fucking woman who built the yeah. who was, did chemistry. Yeah, he's I'm not a trans I'm, woman, and he's like, "What the fuck? What the fuck? There used to be real women in these fucking Hershey's ads." If a, if if my friend tried to text me about that, I would swat him. I would be like, <laughs> "Shut the fuck up!" Yeah, like, like would, a, you, as a human being ads? in as a human being in 2024, 2023, and not let's let's say not someone who's just been liberated by the Allied forces in Holland or something. I don't give a shit about Hershey bars, nor have I thought about them even once in the last 30 years. I, yeah. I, I can't believe he didn't make a beer called Crud Light or something <laughs> like that. Yeah. See, that would be for funny. Like $200. That'd be too much of a joke in there. Crud yeah. Light is just a funny phrase, but uh, just congenitally incapable. Because you know, It goes back to the same thing we said over and over on this show. They're too mad to be funny. Uh-huh. And, and you can like, tell, and, you can feel it and in the movie. Like a, a good example of that is we got to talk about the evil bitch liberal journalist character. But you just did that entire story to what? To make a name for myself? To get clicks? To gain power? What part of I'm a journalist do you not understand? Who Jeremy one, Boring's though. character engages in some sort of S&M relationship with. Like, once again, what... The Daily Wire writers and staff think that like normal, cool, heterosexual, horny American guys are like is deeply strange because we can talk about the the weird uh, separate sperm twins. And that's a joke. And that, that's something that's mentioned at least four times in this movie. But when they when they in the present day, when they go to pick pick them up and be like, hey, you got to play for our team again. They're running a car dealership in which they look like they like sort of a pull back uh, a curtain to reveal their like bro bedroom where the magic happens and it's very clear that it's just like a cave where they do swim in together and they're like wait you, this is where the magic happens or like with you in the same room and they're like yeah dude and it's just like what, we, it's just one of these things where it's like i i don't it just doesn't add up like i, I don't yeah can't, like, yeah like th there's so much going on with the two brothers characters where like so they're wearing like they're wearing like I guess if like you were doing a skit making fun of rappers in 1984, <laughs> this is what yeah. they would dress like because they're they're wearing like gold tracksuits. <laughs> yeah, and that's part of the joke. But then they okay, so they have a car dealership where they can also they'll give you a ride to the airport. Yeah, and then they're also be bell bondsmen. But then the meat of this is. Yeah, they're just constantly running a two man train on girls. <laughs> like, what well, we, the that fuck could are be you a talking about? Like, 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 can you pick like this is like eighteen things? Like, what <laughs> what is the focus of this? Okay, I, I think this is them trying to do a joke about a hustler. Like you in another movie, you would you would see somebody, but it's it's like they usually are better at kind of. You know, they could show them doing the, uh, like doing one thing and then doing the next thing. But instead, they just had them stand and look at the camera and say, we drive people to the airport. We have a sex room at our car dealership. We play <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And here's another example of like, the, like I said, like for something for this movie to like pull off a joke, there are things that you have to like assumptions that you have to have innately already to even understand what they're trying to make fun of or even like be cognizant that there's humor to be mined or like you're supposed to laugh at something right and it speaks to like the fundamentally perverted sexuality of the people making this movie the scene where they go to find their the center the big man on the team and he's living in the michigan woods as like a survivalist because 10 years prior he went insane and lost like a college basketball championship at, you know, whatever, like he lost a big basketball game. And then in the movie, it's revealed he went insane because the opposing team's mascot was doing sort of hip thrusts at him. And that caused a psychic break in him that like 10 years later, he has kidnapped this mascot and keeps him in a basement in his like forest cabin to torture him. That was crazy. That was actually like an insane twist i thought because it like for a second i'm like I, I feel i like feel bad for the badger now man he's been, like it, 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 the, they're saying he's been there for 10 years 
in the basement being tortured. And then I'm supposed to like the guy that's doing the torture. Also, no idea why they keep calling the guy fat. Yes, no they, kept, they kept saying you're fat. Idea. You've gained weight, and you're just <laughs> very clearly not fat. And I kept wondering, like, is that the joke? I, like, I, calling I a guy that, who's obviously not fat, fat multiple times. I was like, is this is this another bit of like meta ironic well, humor? But once again, it's again, like, I, he, okay, he he experiences a psychic break because he sees a mascot thrusting their hips in like the fucking gesture. And then like, but, but like I said, this is what I mean behind every joke in this movie is like the implied threat of rape and torture. Yeah, <laughs> like it's like what, like, like the idea that like that, that would cause a psychic break is, I guess, kind of funny. But then the fact that he's been torturing this guy for years, like, I very I strange. Do, I do think that the your fat thing is them having never really hung out with any dudes, but they're like, I hear when dudes hang out together, they make fun of each other a little bit. Yes, I, like, that's, yeah, yeah, yes. oh my yeah, god, yeah. Because there's a scene in this movie where like the two horny brothers are like, we're lesbians now, and we're gonna go to an all girls sleepover, and Jeremy Boring's like, you know, they don't actually just have sex with each other, and they're like, oh man, bro, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is totally absent any background in like. <laughs> yeah, male friendship. No, yeah, but there's, friend, like, just, the, there's just none of that. The, 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 the joke that they're aware of in the movie, that like straight guys think when girls have slumber parties, they're like getting naked and fucking each other. They have like, I mean, like that's a, you know, that, that, that's a joke. Like it's been done a billion times in movies. It's not new or anything. But the real joke is that their vision of male friendship and camaraderie is as blinkered as the stupid idea that girls are just <laughs> rubbing pussies together when they have a sleepover. They don't understand. They do not understand how men talk to each other. They don't understand like roasting or competition or camaraderie whatsoever. The only thing this movie knows and truly believes is that men and boys are better than women and girls in every aspect, in every way. Well, and that women, and that, not love. trans women, but that <laughs> cisgendered women are disgusting and stupid. Yeah. What about the journalist? This, okay, we this need to talk about also... the journalist character. Because she's, she's, she's just like the closest thing this movie has to an antagonist. And this is another huge problem with this movie that's like screenwriting 101. There is no antagonist in this movie. There's no bad guy other than the culture writ large that allows people to switch their genders. <laughs> the, the, the journalist has a line where she like pins somebody up against the wall and pins Jeremy Boring up against the wall and says, I want you to put a baby in me. And then she, he said, she's like, wait, never mind. I can't have another abortion again this year. And one of the guys from the team that's in the room is like, you're a monster. And then it just goes to the next scene. Yeah. It's like, that's not even a joke, really. That's just them that's just saying a woman who get, who's got a terminated pregnancy is a monster. Yeah, that's all. It that's is. the joke. And there's OK. In, in terms of like the, 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 the best moment in this movie of just like. Z just zero subtext at all a character looking at the screen and just repeating statistics is when the female journalist character jeremy boring's like oh yeah like my divorce has been pretty rough on my daughter and then i swear to god like the bitch journalist character just looks at the screen and is like oh you think so you, you weren't aware that 70 percent of all people in prison are were the from, from divorced parents <laughs> of divorced household and then rattles off a dozen other statistics about something like 80 percent of suicides are, are from people who are uh, whose parents got divorced and i'm like well that can't possibly be fucking true but also yeah, just all like, i could think about that during that moment is bros you have steven crowder in this movie what are you like every Wait, character is steven in, crowder this, in this movie i, I didn't even see who, was I, I, who thought was I saw it? I thought he saw he had like a one scene. I might maybe I'm wrong. I he thought was, it was he had like a one. It was in the dollhouse. Uh, the dollhouse. Yeah, scene. exactly. Like one of the a, random, a one line uh, thing. But you know, it's like I, these are the people like you the work with. He's he's like every character in this movie is divorced. What is the model that you were try, trying to give here? Is this sincere? Are these statistics meant to be said as a joke? Like it, it's completely cl classic thing of being like I need to stop a joke here to just rattle off my pure like ideology yeah yes. yeah yeah i like the idea that steven crowder is like their woody allen <laughs> roman polanski yeah where they're like they're like yeah his work but not the man yeah <laughs> they're like look look he like kept his wife as a hostage for all those years but he's you know like no one no one is better at what he at what he does his craft is so good listen uh, i i have to say this about steven crowder it was extremely hilarious when he stole Anthony Cumia's co-host away from him. <laughs> that was very funny. <laughs> so good, man. That was... For weeks after he's talking, Anthony's like, no co-host. 
you know, and he's talking shit about Crowder and his old co-host. It was very worth it to see. I mean, that's and, one Steven Crowder plus on my side. But then that co-host fell out with Crowder. I know. <laughs> 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 just like I with that guy, I, I always get like I also I always get like tertiary economic anxiety for like people I don't know. I don't know why I but it just like for that guy, I feel it where it's like, oh, like, what the fuck are you going to do now, man? Like <laughs> and he's like, not going to trust you to be a permanent co-host ever again. And he's not going to back to the compound. Three days that's away. for sure. Yeah. Well, Anthony's but like, dead now too. Well, you know, like, <laughs> but, but all this backstabbing and, and, and bitching at each other. Like, do you think that like the misogynist attitudes in this movie that like is taken for granted, it's all stems from the fact that like each one of these guys embodies all of the worst stereotypes about how women act. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they are, uh, it is it has to be treacherous in the in the conservative well i mean and even i did i did you know my show for years and it can sometimes get treacherous in in like the polit on the left political stuff too but these guys are all like i mean they're all stabbing each other in the back for another hundred thousand dollars which i mean if, <laughs> i guess if that's worth it for uh because when they said Steven Crowder was going to pay Dave Landau more than Anthony did by like a lot, I was like started to try to figure out now what kind of money both of those guys have. Because it sounds like Steven Crowder is uh, is doing very well for himself. Uh, can we talk about some of the uh, like the, the the Daily Wire cameo appearances in this movie that were just totally baffling? Like the Ted the Cruz cameo, guy. the Ted Cruz cameo. He gets one line in this movie that's like. Ted Cruz is going in, in, in this movie. Ted Cruz is playing himself and he's attending a high school basketball game in Tennessee. And he, and he shows up and he's like, Hey, are these seats taken? And they're like, yes. And he's like, I, I, I told you we should have gotten box seats. That's it. That's the joke. Yeah. The, the, uh, the Michael Knowles was like a one line thing. Cause I recognized him. And the, the best one is Ben Shapiro in this rated R movie having cuss words bleep. Yep. Because he probably wouldn't say them, I guess. <laughs> okay, Ben Shapiro has a, has a five-second cameo as the referee in one of these basketball games. And I just, look, maybe this is a cheap shot, but I got to point out that he's still wearing his stupid-ass yarmulke, even in a cameo appearance portraying a basketball referee. Like, yeah. I, like the idea, I like the idea of like someone ejecting a referee for wearing a yarmulke. <laughs> it's not part of the uniform. <laughs> get, that off the, get that off the fucking court. That's not part of basketball. <laughs> well, would, it he surprise you, would, it, would it surprise you to learn that ben shapiro is a huge boston celtics fan even though he was born in los angeles <laughs> no way i mean well look i mean if you're a fan of the nba you can do the math on that one but like yeah, I, I, yeah, I like I, all the montages I, I love the montages of the lady ballers balling out against like you know real women uh, competition oh. Because, like, there's a scene of all them dunking, but it's so clear that it's a six-foot hoop. It's a, yeah. it's a montage of them dunking on, like, a fucking six-foot hoop. And then just, like, a slow-mo montage of just essentially women being beaten, but with basketballs instead of fists. And one of the women uh, falls in love with one of the loser guys, too. Like, and has a, he gets her pregnant. No, both of the brothers she's... get her pregnant. It's yeah, the same yeah, thing yes, that yes, dad yes, did. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's what it was. And I was like, Sorry. He he beat me so bad it made me horny actually because of how great he is at basketball, which is another probably belief by these guys. Well, I mean, okay, uh, the 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 bitch liberal journalist character. We first encounter her after like uh, the he get he gets the guy to win the win the track meet, right? And then she's like, "Oh, there's a story here. I I can manipulate these these guys into do, you know becoming you know uh, trans icons or whatever." And then like, okay, so he's. So Jeremy Boring and this guy has just won $5,000. I did like the detail that Jeremy Boring gives the guy who won the race uh, $500 out of the $4,500 he's keeping for himself to pay, quote, child support. Yep. As the coach <laughs> of a guy who just won a 100-meter dash. There's not much coaching you need to fucking do for that. Yeah. Uh, but so, like, yeah. She, so she rolls up, and then like after the guy leaves, she's like, no. To Jeremy Boring, she goes, no, you're coming home with me because I got to have sex with you because you're a winner now. This guy coached someone who just won a fucking foot race. And she's like, <laughs> I, once again, like the assumptions you have to have to find this funny, 
like to, to believe that there's even the barest shred of like human behavior that's being satirized here is to be a psychopath. Like your yeah, understanding of sex and humanity is so fundamentally skewed that like, what are you even making fun of? And the answer is this bizarre concoction of like phantasms that they've erected in their own minds about like, you know, uh, about, about women's sexuality. It also feels like guys that, you know, didn't have a lot of sex in high school and stuff like that and blamed it on this char charisma that these athletes or whatever had when a lot of times like women also like the athletes because they're not fucking dickheads. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. They're like, not possessive lot, little creeps. Yeah. A, a <laughs> yeah, lot of the, probably been. yeah. A lot of the athletes I knew were also like, incredibly academically accomplished and just by virtue of like doing a physical thing with linear progression and like a, a, a teamwork had like some measure of maturity beyond like the rest of us yeah and it's not a charisma because th like the the thing they confuse is like this is a charisma of, of this is a charisma that causes that because they win that they win this stuff and that means they're bestowed some kind of ancient charisma that winners get. And instead, it is like, it really is just like guys that aren't like assholes, guys that like, because these guys have clearly, Jeremy Boring has never hung out with a group of guys. I just never refuse no. to believe no, that. The, the yeah. Daily Wire, if you, if you watch Daily Wire content, when they're hanging out in the dude's room, and they have oh, an yeah. old timey popcorn machine and they're all smoking cigars. And half of the guys that they're hanging out with are 70 years old, like Andrew Clavin. <laughs> and they're, and they're, they're hanging remember. out in the dude's room, like the screening room, the Daily yeah. Wire writer's room. And they're just token stogies uh, chopping it up with each other. But Brian, you're so right. It is just like this is their adult fantasy version of what it was like for the rest of us to have friends in high school. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Or even and now, even room. as adults, like this is yeah, this is what guys like to do: hang out next to a popcorn machine, smoking cigars. <laughs> I remember I watched one that was like a six-minute video about them saying, "Like, no, you didn't just say that Die Hard's a Christmas movie." <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> oh. Go fuck, fuck yourself, off. Jesus Christ! Was this movie I, made? I, I, was this yeah, movie made god. in a time machine? <laughs> possibly it could have been written in in the early 2000s maybe and then they just like some of it's written and then they were like it was probably about like another conservative issue it was of about the gay moment, marriage like gay marriage <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 and they're like yeah. let's change that around a little bit and add some trans stuff it's well, yeah i don't want to like get too epic about this like the the stuff that like men talk about in a group because you know everyone everyone's different right but I, for me, you know, laughter is a, a, one of the greatest things in life. You know, the most the, one of the best things you could do with your friends is come up with like, you know, incredibly elaborate jokes that hinges like on your knowledge of each other that aren't necessarily like they're not always like mean even. That's yeah. just, it's just, it is based on how well you know these people. You're crafting a kind and of shared mythology. Yeah, yeah, and there's just none of that here. It's just like they have like they have like a a, a guidebook for what to talk about when they meet a cool man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> can we talk about um can we talk about the one scene in this movie where I was actually taken aback by how evil it was? It was actually like kind of surprising to me even for this movie. And it's a scene that happens towards the end of the movie where it's like the championship women's basketball event. And at this point, like Jeremy Boring uh, feels guilty that he's like destroyed women's sports with this cruel charade. It's gone too far, blah, blah, blah. At some point, uh, the like the sort of the star athlete, the, the first guy he recruits into his lady ballers team, who's been portraying a woman now for like, I guess, months in the movie and who was working at the dollhouse restaurant when Jeremy Boring first encounters him. Says to, says to his coach at this point, he basically says that, like, this is no longer pretend for me. And has basically, like, authentically become trans in some way. And he says, and it's actually, like, a moment that kind of, like, surprised me. Because I was like, oh, is this movie going to be like, oh, it's okay to be trans, but, like, don't just, don't play basketball don't. against <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that's not too well. Yeah, like, and he's like, he, say, he says, coach, like, 
all this time playing basketball, like I've never felt myself. I've never felt like my parents are proud of me. Like I just didn't know who I was. But like doing this and like being a woman has made me finally feel like at home with myself and who I am. And I was just like, oh, wow, like that's sort of like, I'm like this is surprisingly like tender, incredible re rendering of like someone struggling with their gender identity. And then nope, it is just shut down immediately because Jeremy Boring gives him the worst pep talk ever where he just goes, everyone's confused, but you're not a woman. You just live in a, like a shitty culture and had shitty parents. And no parent should love you unconditionally. He says, parents should love you unconditionally, but they, shouldn't, they should be proud of you conditionally. And he just goes, you're not a woman. You're a man. And then he's just like, thanks, coach. And I was just I'm like, like, yeah, like I, I'm sorry. It's not all of us are confused about that. I would, I would, I would hasten to say that most of us are not. Like he's, he's, that was the biggest tell to me was when he was like, we're, we, we all think this sometimes, right? <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, no, like that's actually not like that. No. no but he literally Half says to us. <laughs> He says to him, like, uh, you're not a woman. You just had bad parents. Yeah. Like, it's everybody's got like, like, what are you what are you supposed to do about it now? Like, oh, just like, oh, OK, I got thanks. I'll move on now. I'll, I'll accept myself. Well, you're, you're also missing the uh, cruel capper of that scene, which is the basketball guy being like, well, how do you know I'm not a woman? And then he, Jeremy Boring just kicks him in the nuts. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, he says something about your parents have been telling you that they're proud of you when they're not really proud of you. It was like such a weird fucking scene where I was like, yeah, it was the opposite of uplift. It was like, even, <laughs> even if you're trying to like in the in the moral universe of this movie, make a credible like thesis statement at the end of the movie about why gender identity or transitioning gender is wrong and why men are men and women are women if you were to, I, I like i thought there would be a way to like i guess there really isn't a way to render that in a compassionate <laughs> like in a compassionate no. point of view but like this just came across as like the most deflating and like uninspirational and like mean thing you could say to someone who told you like that they were questioning their gender gender identity but in the, the universe of this movie, they're like, that's just what everyone needs to hear. The truth. Your parents don't love you and never did. Yeah, you're con you're constructing this elaborate satire to send up what you think of as like a, a, a social ill. But even through an hour and 50 minutes of this, the satire cannot reach deeper than just the response. No, you're not. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like, I, I thought... I thought, like, the movie, like, if it wanted to make the point that, like, oh, like, th there's some scourge of, like, you know, men pretending to be women in women's sports or something like that, which isn't true. But, like, I thought, like, you could make the case, like, if the movie acknowledged that some people do have, uh, you know, do transition and do feel, uh, like, you know, different than the, or the body that they were assigned at birth or whatever, I thought the movie could make, like, it, it would be more credible and it would do, like, do more work towards the agenda it's trying to fucking uh, foment if it just acknowledged that and, like, been like, yeah, it's okay, we're, you're still our friend and we do acknowledge your gender or whatever. But, like, yeah, just don't play basketball anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We all have bad parents that say yeah. they're proud of us when they're really not. <laughs> and yeah, uh, yeah. just don't, don't go home and think about that for the rest of the night after yeah. this comedy. I'm sure that won't cause any more issues. Uh, yeah. No. <laughs> But like, I, I Which is about, like, funny because that's what they see. Like, you got to think of how they see their own parents as like my parents, maybe because their parents didn't tell them they're proud of them, that that's how they succeeded or something. It's really yes, hard no, to no, tell. Brian, like, somebody like, wrote about their parents. The way, the way this movie deals with like bullying and being a winner, too, is also really telling because they're like. Oh, like it's not that it's not like I'm not fucked up today because I was bullied as a kid. It's that like, oh, the kids today aren't allowed to bully other kids. So yeah. like, like what yes. was done to me is actually right and proper. And that like your role as an adult is to continue doing that and to continue like, yeah, just being like, if you're an adult who's worried that kids aren't being bullied enough in school, you should be in prison. You should be <laughs> yeah. lobotomized. Like what is wrong with you? It's not true either. Yeah. You know? like, kids will, kids will be mean to each other no matter what. Yeah. That's uh, my daughter just, you know, graduated high school and, uh, Kids are just as mean as they ever were, conservatives. It's not changing, and they'll always be just as mean. You know, it, she got lucky, and there wasn't as much bullying, but there was still, I mean, now they got Instagram pages to pick on nerds. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that, that lasts forever. These, yeah. That's fucking forever. I, I do want to talk about the climax of this movie, though, which was 
again, like if, if I was writing a parody of this movie, I couldn't have come up with like the psychosexual dynamics on, on display <laughs> in the climax of this movie, which features the Lady Ballers reach the championship round to advance to the global games or something like that. After like, you know, beating every women's team by like 100 points, their competition for the final match is that like the bitch journalist has sold out to the coach of the other team and then like sex blackmailed him into fielding another team of men pretending to be women, except his team of men pretending to be women are all black guys. And then like yes. they, they, they see their competition. They're like, row, row, oh, whoa, record scratch. They're like, whoa, what? <laughs> So like th- that that's weird enough already, and like of course they they get annihilated by like the, the 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 squad of black guys pretending to be women, but then there's a moment where one of one of the their opposing players has their shorts yanked down in front of an entire audience of people, and this is where the Andrew Claven cameo, where everyone's looking at this you know a, a guy's dick, and he says, "Good lord, that's the biggest dick I've ever seen on a woman," and like they just need to make a joke about a black guy's cock. And how big it is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, they just need to throw <laughs> that in there. And, like, it's just... And, and and then the climax of the movie is that Jeremy Barring puts in his own daughter and her friends to play against the adult black men pretending to be women. And that's the climax of the movie. Because, like... And then I think, weirdly... Like, they, like, this is a big triumphant moment because they're like, they're like, we're finally doing things the right way. And we're not, pol- we're not polluting women's sports or like the purity of competition. But the way he views all women, the way they view all women's sports is a team of seven year old girls competing against adult men. <laughs> <laughs> that's and how seriously they're... they take the thought of women's sports in a movie that's supposed to be like about protecting women's sports. And I believe. There was even one of these like athletes in the movie who's made a big stink about losing to some trans woman in a swim meet. And she's in this movie and there's a scene with it where with a swim meet where she gets like she's like finishing her lap. And then the guy is already out of the pool, like shaking her hand, pulling her out of the pool. And I'm like, from her perspective, like if you're an athlete who's trying to like make the case that you're a serious competitor at the highest level, why are you like getting in on a joke? We're like you're you're that bad at swimming that a guy who hasn't even been in a pool could beat you by a lap. It just doesn't I, seem to I respect even, the, the thought of like women's sports at all. No, I knew I I absolutely knew that when they were went backstage to when they went to the locker room to get ready at the first game where they come out as the lady ballers, I fucking knew that the audience was going to be like nobody or like two or three i thought it might be like two or three women that look like lesbians yeah really what i thought there's also can there's also a cameo i know this is a cameo i just don't know who he who it is but the cable news people do you do you know who those are those people that was michael knowles and the girl that looks like ben shapiro i don't know her name (laughs) oh okay yeah because oh i'm native american now i'm an indigenous person and then she gets a yeah, it's She's I wearing I was like, like that woman or something like uh, yeah, yeah, that yeah. woman is definitely a Daily Wire person because th- it's just so poorly. It's like so not funny. It's, yeah, the, all the women in this movie, except for like the Jeremy Boring's ex-wife, they all act as though like someone came into the set and like beat Jeremy Boring to, like to nearly to death. <laughs> Like just like <laughs> violently assaulted it, them, and they're like, "Well, we like we only have like this studio space for another day. Like we have to do these scenes. Like I know what we saw was fucked up, but we have to keep <laughs> going." <laughs> they're just they, they have like a stilted, sti- stilted like traumatized delivery. That's so it was like very they, an- anti humor. Yeah, they had all just got off the set for The Crow, starring Brandon Lee, and they were like, "Yeah, can we, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Can we get you to do a few cu- cu- quick, few quick scenes here for Jeremy Boring and Boring Movies, a production of Boring Films." <laughs> yeah, like the journalist character who I will charitably say. It looks like if Ukraine tried to make their own Anna Kendrick. <laughs> uh, but from the Chernobyl region of Ukraine. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, her, ca- like all the women characters, except for, I guess, Jeremy Boring's wife, but even her are so fucking baffling. Like, uh, you know, obviously this woman has insane psychosis about women, but like, most of the women characters with speaking lines are like outright evil. They're yeah. Like, no, they're, 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 they're repellent. They are, they are monsters. They are all awful. 
and like violent too and like violently evil yeah like okay all the shit with the journal like the journalist like was trying to kill Jeremy Boring with the anti-materiel rifle. I don't yeah. know what that was about. I, the thing with like, yeah, the, I, they don't know what a hickey is. No, you don't like get blisters. Nope. No, I mean, it, no, no. It, it, like, it, it was, he had burns on his neck from being tied to a radiator, which they, it's part of like an S and M thing. Cause like the scene where the, the bitch journalist, that's not takes, what S and M is. Yeah. I'm really, I really understand. I really the S and M. I had my partner shoot me in the kneecap with his gun. <laughs> you fucking that is idiot! Exactly the thought here, I think, because yeah. that, because that's the joke, is right. He's like, "Can we have sex now?" And uh, which says something about him too. I don't really know yeah, what. Begging for it. Yeah, begging yeah. for it from a woman that's Asking been beating for him up yeah. for weeks. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, she, but she's. So she's like, I, I'm awful. I'm I'm a liberal who. I, I alternate between really believing in this stuff and yes, not yes. every oh other thing. Couldn't figure that out. Yeah, yeah. but no, all, but also, also, she's unreservedly against no fault divorce. Yeah, that that <laughs> well, was a Stephen Crowder Felix, contribution. Yeah, Felix, like uh, the 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 journalist character was so funny because it was like, oh, she's a liberal, but like she b- actually believes all the conservative things about gender and sexuality and marriage, but she just only cynically doesn't believe it for money and there's a scene once again looking at the camera where she goes these transhumanist tech oligarchs and nihilist college professors have already convinced every self-righteous housewife with munchausen by proxy to sacrifice their kids on the altar of false virtue the least we could do is get rich off it and yeah it, 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 it's so it's, bad yeah, yeah it's just, like it's just, oh. I, but like the, what are the logistics of like how do they think it works like if like a local reporter did a news report where they were like, oh, this like trans woman won a race. <laughs> or it's like, it's like, is the CEO of news going to be like, oh my God, oh my God, we're giving you a million dollars for this uh, great story. It got so many clicks. Your article's going viral. Which is like, once again, speaking to like the Jeremy Boring's understanding of sexuality, the one scene in this movie that was, I think, wholly unintentionally funny, but the, the, the one gag that like got me the closest to like actually laughing was after the bitch journalist takes him home to have sex with him because he's a winner now that he coached a guy to win a hundred meter race. Uh, she takes him home and like it cuts to them and like they're both in bed after having sex, presumably. And she is dressed like Batman. She has a full yes. Batman leather <laughs> costume on and she's like, you know, like snuggling up to go to bed. He is fully clothed and tied to the bed. But the one detail I thought like could have been funny if it was intentional is that he's still wearing his coach's polo tee and like stopwatch around his neck in bed after having sex. But like, I think that was entirely yeah, incidental. Yeah. Like, I don't think that was an intentional yeah. joke. Yeah, I if I will give them that one if it's even if it's not intended yeah. Yeah. intentional there none of the intentional jokes are funny not a single fucking one of the intentional jokes in here are funny there are unintentionally like weird dark things about the people that made this movie that you're like Let, okay. in your head the whole time for, like, for instance man. for instance as i mentioned at the very beginning of this episode the how much guy yep who makes yeah. probably a half dozen appearances with the same joke where this like very weird looking cowboy man, originally he, he discovers Jeremy Boring and the athlete dressed as women in an alley and solicits them for sex by saying, how much? And then they're like, Ooh, yikes, not for me. Ooh, time to go away. And then he keeps showing up throughout this movie whenever it is like implied that a man might be having sex with another man or being naked to just show up at the high school basketball game and be like, how much? <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I don't know. Find... I, I can't fully psychoanalyze that joke or what it speaks to or like just the fear and desire to be penetrated by another man. I don't know. But like, it certainly wasn't funny. But oh, like, OK, in the first how much scene, Alex, the the guy who uh, eventually wins the race, he just like he abandons Jeremy Boring. He just fucking dashes out of there. He's gone. You don't see him. Jeremy Boring, he's shown to like he's trying to run in like high heels and shit and he's not making it like the how much guy is rapidly gaining on him 
But then the scene just like cuts to the day of the race, and it's like, well, wait, did that guy fuck him? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> did he get you? Did he get yeah, his money's like, worth? I, that's what I meant when I meant director's trademark. Director and all his friends get raped. Like that. <laughs> it, it's like presumably that happened, but he's just like he's such a winner that he's like, no, nah, I'm, I'm still I'm doing the race tomorrow. I did just find the Lady Ballers uh, review on Worth It or Woke. And, uh, <laughs> it is please, worth it, everybody. Please. And it's oh, 100% good. not woke. <laughs> yeah. it had the, it, it, uh, Fair enough. Yeah, I was looking for the how much guy, trying to find out if it's like a cameo or something like that, because I've never fucking seen that guy. But yeah, they gave it a good uh they gave it a good review on Worth It or Woke. It got a uh it you're looking at uh 76% overall score, story and plot was 70%, visuals and cinematography 75, performance 68. That's generous. <laughs> no. Generous. Direction <laughs> direction 70% and then non-wokeness 100%. <laughs> <laughs> what a criteria! What a fucking criteria for assessing something's artistic value. I've never seen that site, but now I'm uh, going like to be on it. Acting, all the time. acting, directing, writing, all thoroughly mediocre. Wokeness? Oh boy, is this movie not woke? It's the masterpiece. I would love to it read a review. It had all the stupid politics I believe in. I would love to read a review of the movie Atonement on that website. <laughs> <laughs> like, Sex is bad in that movie too. Yeah, I think yeah, I think they might like it. I don't know. I love that movie. Maybe they will too. Uh, yeah, I <laughs> insane I, sight. I yeah, I, I you know the first like Daily Wire movie we watched, it was that school shooter movie that like they had nothing very, to do with the production. They just distributed it, so mm -hmm. it's like a right, watchable right. okay movie. Right, right. It, it was like a very like six out of ten movie. Like nothing really bad about it, and mm. I guess it gave me like an unrealistic uh, picture of how horrible it would be to watch these movies. This was like, God, this made me yearn for the Reliant. Do oh my God, like, yes. Do they have like so? It's like everything else on here. Base. It, there's no uh, what's it called? There's no like sitcoms or anything on here, right? Not yet. Is every. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I'm wondering. Because it now all depends on the success of Lady Ballers. Will you get a Lady I Ballers mean, sitcom? Oh my which, god! Uh, the yeah. first contact I had with Lady Ballers, I didn't know it was coming out. I was on Rotten Tomatoes looking for some review or something like that, and it had like a 75 percent on there. And I was like, "Holy shit! What is this movie?" And I clicked it and found out it was like a Daily Wire thing. And now it's gone down to 50 percent, and only seven people have reviewed it anyway. So it doesn't matter. <laughs> But I was just like, what is this? And uh, it's Sorority Boys. It's kind of the same movie as Sorority Boys from the 2000s. Yeah. Well, what if what if white chicks, like, what if none and no one in that movie had any charisma? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's nothing funny. <laughs> um, I, I feel like we're wrapping up. I just wanted to say one thing about, like, I guess kind of the filmmaking and also just the violence as it's portrayed in both this and also I was thinking about Range 15. There's something subtle in these conservative comedies uh, in the way that they like stage violent gags where it's just like a little extra viciousness in the reality of, of like people getting hit. Like I'm thinking of them shoving towels on the Felix character at the beginning, some people wrestling. And it, it I honestly made me think a lot about the movie Bottoms from this summer, which I know people are hot and cold on. I quite like but like the difference in these two things, you know, Bottoms has a scene where a female character has the shit beaten out of her by a male athlete that in the context of that movie is fucking hilarious. But the context of the movie is that the idea of violence, the idea of resorting to fighting is funny. In these conservative movies, it isn't the, like the concept of violence isn't funny. It is the actual violence itself is good. And we should be doing it. And it is yeah. funny to exert violence yeah. on yes, other yes, people. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. exactly. It is yeah. funny to dominate and degrade <laughs> others. Not like the idea <laughs> of degradation is it has, you know, some some kind of satirical moment to it. And that's where the satire fails, because it's not satire. They're just like, no, it's actually good. Yeah. I I um I think Range 15 is the most useful movie to compare this one to. But I would almost like 
I unreservedly would say Rage 15 movie was better because at least it's like it's like a conservative sallow kind. It's of. truer in a way in a way. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, it's a it's a conservative sallow unintentionally because it is like their intent is like I, I guess like they saw like um epic movie and were like we let's do that. <laughs> yeah. But like with famous <laughs> troops. But it's <laughs> It's, it's it's so like it's so just like over the top like uh, unfunny and thoroughly repulsive that it does tell like a fundamental truth and it's at, it, the artistic value there is some of it just by the fact that these guys have killed people and now they're and now they're making like ringtone jokes while also like <laughs> yeah ne- doing necrophilia I, I, it holds some type of like abstract value i regrettably i would put it in like the voyager capsule i would be like <laughs> this is unfortunate like this explains a lot of humanity unfortunately <laughs> lady ballers i would um I think I would like exile like even the the lighting crew to the countryside. <laughs> five generations. Yeah, the sound anyone mixer who worked needs to on go this, to Elba. Yeah. yeah, it's like anyone who worked on this, you internal banishment, you can never work on the arts again. I don't care. Like I know that like most of the people who worked on this movie, you're like just trying to get experience. You're doing the thing where you're getting really good at like rolling up cables. I know, <laughs> but this I hated watching this. You're getting yeah. banished. As I said before, this is a movie that is not just unfunny, but like when this movie was over, I began to seriously question whether I would ever laugh again or whether <laughs> I would be able of recognizing like humor when I encountered it because of like how thoroughly it had defiled the very concept of something being funny. I guess my I, I you know my my overall review of this movie would be if you are gay or trans then by all means, watch this movie because rest assured, you are completely let off the hook. Not a single blow is landed, nor do they even really acknowledge your existence. However, if you are a cisgendered woman or anyone who cares about female women's sports, then this movie will be the most offensive thing you've ever seen. Like this violently. This is the takedown of that. Yeah. 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 We made a takedown of women's sports. <laughs> no, of, of yeah. women. Of women, period. Yes. That's what this movie is. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I didn't even pick, I did pick up on the like you know what they were saying about women athletes like I I definitely like picked up on that when I watched it but then now that you add it all together there's this weird like guys that hate women guys that have never hung out with guys because the violent stuff in this is exactly the thing too it's like when you're a teenager not in your 30s or in your 20s but when you're a teenager you and your friends beat the crap out of each other for like fun at least that's what we did we would yes. you know sneak up behind a guy and kick him in the back of the knees yeah. so he yeah. falls but what, you don't do that in your fucking 30s and <laughs> you don't do it <laughs> there are so many yeah. teams of adult men <laughs> wrestling with each other and being like shut up you're an idiot no you're an idiot and then just fighting <laughs> Yeah, that's yeah. not that's not how thirty year old men hang out with each other. So yeah, yeah like am I am I supposed to believe that like Jeremy Boring is like regularly like nut tapping Steven Crowder? Yeah, <laughs> like maybe I don't like. know. Wait, wait, a little grab ass. Yeah, like this is a movie. It was like the political point of view is that women's sports need to be protected from a thing that isn't happening anywhere. But women's sports, the thing that we need to protect are entirely worthless and stupid and women shouldn't play sports. Right. And, and, then, and one of the reasons that women shouldn't play sports is because their divine role is to civilize men who oh, are... Like, oh, who oh are, the line where Jeremy Boring says to his daughter, we, we, yeah, sure, women aren't... He says, sure, women aren't as good at basketball or, or, or driving or rock and roll. That's just not true. They're better at basketball. Okay, yeah, basketball. And swimming. Okay. MMA. That goes without saying. And running, and javelin, powerlifting, shot put, hockey, karate, football, hole vault, driving, parking, most of the stem fields, rock and roll, opening pickle jars. Okay. He says well, he says better, better at rock and roll at one point, which is like, okay. okay so, uh, so, he's, so he puts like, I presumably any, like he puts like Creed over like Sleater Kenny. I yep. presume. Yeah. A hundred percent. Yeah. A thousand percent. A thousand, yeah. Yeah. So like, so he tells his daughter, and again, what is supposed to be the movie 
like communicating a, a message, a, a wholesome message of truth that's just like, this is important. And it's just, this is a guy telling his daughter, he's supposed to be a good father, he's telling his daughter, I, I know women aren't as good at men at anything that's cool or interesting, but like, don't worry, you can still nurture a child and civilize <clears throat> men, just like your mom tried to civilize me. And it's just like, why wouldn't someone transition gender if this is the fucking expectation? If you're if you're uh, you know born a woman, is it like, uh, guess what? You'll never be good at anything cool or fun. So just uh, you know, become a mom. That's kind of yeah, cool, I, right? I also like the the implication that Jeremy Boring is just like he's like fucking Rambo in First Blood. He is like <laughs> he's. He is like he is so primal and yeah. masculine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So many rough edges that need to be sanded him. down. Yeah, Jeremy yeah. Boring would probably be like just ripping people's throats out if he didn't have a good woman holding him I back. I mean, your mom's not even really good at civilizing men. She wasn't able to pull it off with me. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I don't honestly know what she's good at. <laughs> I mean, I think it's not a coincidence that you very, very rarely see the trans panic on the in the daily wire set directed towards trans men in anything because i think the real panic is not really gender fluidity in any way but is the idea of becoming a woman yes you know it is yeah being, yeah it's not it's not just the, it's not just the threat or fear of being uh feminized in some way which is of course wrong for lots of hilarious comedy material uh <laughs> imagining being raped in this movie but like it's the idea that w that women could uh, endeavor to achieve something that is in any way better than what you the shitty output that you've created in your life because like that's why the the women's sports thing is such like it, it, that it, it's why this disturbs them so much not not the idea that a, a man could like of course beat any woman at a sport it's the idea that like yes at the highest level of competition the like the best male athlete will always outperform at the same sport or beat in some stupid way the best the most elite female athlete but like and in the, the most, explicit cosmology of this movie the black male athlete will yeah, always outperform the white yes, male athlete yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. That, that as well but also it's just like that for that for for any not even elite woman athlete for like anyone who's trained they are better, faster, stronger than 99% of every man on the planet at that, at that, whether it's that physical, at that sport or like just simply lifting or running fast, lifting something heavy or running fast. They are better than you. They are better than Ben Shapiro. And I would say the average woman who's even not an athlete is probably stronger and faster than Ben fucking Shapiro is. <laughs> and it's that, it's that yeah. cursed knowledge to know that like, they, yeah, you are a man. So you have no excuse for how fucking weak and shitty everything you do is. How just how generally bad and fucking coddled your life has been. So the idea that any woman anywhere could produce anything of value is so threatening and horrifying to these men that like it has to be like an outlandish comedy uh, concept. Again, and again people... like in he when he gives that whole speech to his daughter and he with MMA, he's like, oh, God, no. Again. Ronda Rousey and Claudia Gedalia, who's like Ronda Rousey, isn't like a she's not like huge. She's like five six. She's like strong, but she's you know larger than a larger like person than Claudia Gedalia. Claudia Gedalia fought at a much lower weight class. I've seen countless videos of both of them like just destroying very well trained men. Like it's just like professional like really does mean something especially at the highest level like just going by this movie a guy like steven crowder supposedly could like beat the shit out of amanda nunez and it's like no he would he would that that's the end of steven crowder he'd fucking die <laughs> really any brazilian woman probably god i would love i would just i would love one of these guys to fight a, a a professional woman i will also say will you you mentioned it but they say that all men can beat all women at athletic competition yes but the rock and roll thing is even worse because it's like women can't even make music as good as <laughs> yeah, men. Yeah, yeah. Like, there's no <laughs> there's no, like there's no physical there's no dis there's no innate disadvantage in producing music Nope. <laughs> like the but, only the only thing they can do is like be married to fucking Jeremy Boring and be like, uh, you should you should like stop caring uh, about winning as much, but you should win. Yeah. And yeah. he's like, yeah, hey, I, thank you. I fixed my life. Like it's so 
it's such a fucking <laughs> grim. It's I'd say it's like grimmer than Handmaid's Tale. At least they had <laughs> oh uniforms. god, yeah. Like the idea that like no matter what you do in your life, no matter what like athletic or academic achievement, no matter what you're good at, no matter what like no matter how grand and artistic vision you have, your your destined purpose is to like you know be married to fucking James to Mr. O'Keefe. Boring. Yeah, and <laughs> to, like, and be and like, to produce and be like, boring hey, heirs for the the boring head of the household. Yeah, to make him like lemon bars and to tell him to like, to, to like tone it down. Sometimes I guess it's it, like the, it is like I would say one of the most anti women things I've ever seen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like it is. It's like women. Women they are supposed to exist just barely as an auxiliary unit to men. And I not mean, even like impressive men, just like any fucking loser. Women are basically so that they can tell you to mow the grass. Because yeah, women yeah. can't mow the grass. <laughs> that being said, I would, I would do anything for these Daily Wire dweebs to put their money where their mouth is, and I would, I would sponsor a, a televised sporting event in which, like, the Daily Wire fields a starting five of their all stars. I'm talking Ben Shapiro. Michael Knowles, <laughs> Andrew Clavin, uh, the even weirder, more annoying one, the the gay one. I don't know. All five of them. Is there a black guy uh, in the Daily Wire? Probably. I, I mean, I mean, well, no, they, they, there, is, there isn't a black guy who like is fully Daily Wire team, but he's been in some of their productions. Zuby. Okay. <laughs> Do you guys so, know yeah, Zuby? Yeah, Zuby on the Zuby. team. I'm saying, the yeah, Daily Wire. the conservative rapper. I want to see. <laughs> yeah, I want to see their starting five. I want to see the Daily Wire All Stars play a game of pickup basketball against just one, like either Candace Parker or Brianna Stewart, just one good woman, women's basketball player. And I would like to see them run them off the fucking court, not being able to pass the ball. 